Hey everyone, this is Steve Good, and welcome back to the Coin Chat. Yuri Cataldo, great to see you as all as always. And we're <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Steve. You're welcome. With the with the well, it looks like a blue brick wall, but that might not be the case. Or it, is it will case. always. It is a case right now because I accidentally clicked off. So yes. Oh, uh, but you can switch to it. It's our, I'm, I'm waiting for the next background change. And then also we're joined by uh, our friend Ethan Klein. Uh, Ethan, welcome to the the. Oh, that's good. You've been yeah. See, yeah. 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 For those of us, for those of us, actually doing right. Podcast, but, for, yeah. for those of us who can't, <laughs> for those of us who can't see what's happening because it's on the podcast, Yuri has got a, a blue background and he's decided to turn the background into some sort of a an uh, a space odyssey experience. And unfortunately, it made his shirt go into a space odyssey and his face go space odyssey. And the blue background, there was no moon, so it was really like, and there were no Lambos either. <laughs> Yeah, it did, it did not. It was so poor planning on my part for having a blue shirt and a blue background. So right. So, I'll anyways, Ethan, Ethan Klein, you joining us? You have finished your ICO with your project called Crowd Holding. Crowd Holding, very exciting. Crowd finished holding. in January. Did the I did the ICO as I recall in November and December at the height of ICO mania, and at the end of it, at the worst possible time for ICOs in probably ICO history, which was in the middle of a massive decline in January of 2018 when everything was just falling apart. But yeah. you got through alive. We did, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And, and of course, Yuri, I'm sure you're dying to ask everybody the question you love to ask every week. It is, have you spent any Bitcoin this week? Not this week. I, yeah. But we did, give, we did give we uh, we did give uh, we give some salary bonuses in crypto oh. uh, as part because it makes sense as we're in crypto to also uh, reward your employees. Um, but lad, not this week. I have not spent any Bitcoin or crypto this week. Have you ever? Interesting. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. In general. Have in you general, ever? Though, yes, yes, I have. Uh, in, in Prague, there's a Parallel Police Bitcoin Cafe. But actually, uh, you only can purchase either in Litecoin or Bitcoin your coffee and food there, uh, which is an interesting, uh, I recommend coming to Prague to visit there. So know? I wonder if they're running a profitable or a massively loss losing business right now, given the yeah. vol volatility. <laughs> so well, does, does the price of coffee change regularly? Yeah, you would, uh, they change it at the actual whatever the fiat price is in Corona is what you buy it in Bitcoin. Okay, so you're buying check crone to Bitcoin, but they're giving you a price on the day for, so like they're changing it by the minute because it's up a thousand yeah. points. So I, yeah, I if, you, if you bought your coffee an hour ago, it was like a thousand. <laughs> right. yeah, Discounts I, on I, coffee, everyone quick, get to the cafe. <laughs> I, uh, I, I bought a little Bitcoin there through their Bitcoin ATM. It was like 2016, made mm -hmm. some purchases. I recall like only having maybe a couple dollars left and then I went back later when Bitcoin was more at its height. And I found out I have like, whoa, I have $30 now. <laughs> it, was, it was quite crazy. So you made money on having coffee. You made money on barely having anything there. But yeah. Well, that's, that that's one of the more, let's say, positive success stories we've heard on the whole Bitcoin fund. It certainly beats Paralyms buying a, a Bitcoin with beer and then finding out how much Bitcoin he spent on the beer. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he did it so many years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me, on the other hand, yeah, I did try uh, on the weekend. I took the family away for a little weekend get getaway. And mm -hmm. we were just driving by like a little marina or whatever. And, and my wife, she said, um, should we just stop like to have a look? And I didn't really have anything in mind when she said that. I was like, <laughs> sure, we can stop and have a look at the boats. That's fine if that's what you want to do. But that yeah. wasn't what she had in mind. And then she walked, she said, come, let's go into the, um, like the, uh, the shop, whatever. And they had like a, like a, you know, like the renting the boats and then they had another like sales office and we were there like early on a Saturday. So it was all right. It's like, okay, cool. Let's pop in. And she's, mm -hmm. uh, so she walks straight in and she says, love the boats. Um, can we buy one with Bitcoin? <laughs> 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 and the guy just looked at us and said, what's that? <laughs> I was, you were saved. Oh. You almost Almost I was going to start calling on my friends, asking them to transfer Bitcoin to me. Like, please, I need some Bitcoin. Anybody that's got some, please send it my way. In fact, you know, now that we've got the YouTube channel thing coming up soon, we're going to have to start putting like links down at the bottom with donations. 
<laughs> just in case yeah. it actually works out. Steve <laughs> needs a boat. Donate here. Yeah, no, I don't need a boat. They agreed. They said yes. It's the first time in like 20 episodes that someone said yes to accepting Bitcoin. And by the way, we haven't come across any shops that say Bitcoin accepted here. And if they did, we wouldn't go in because it would have ruin half the fun of the experience. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Part of the fun is getting rejected. And, and Ethan, you were saying that there's also a, a Bitcoin ATM as well next to the cafe. Was that right? Yeah, it's, it's in the cafe. So you actually, they give you a card. That and you, you can you deposit fiat as well? Can you like yeah. take your your crones yeah. and put them back and say, "Oh, I took out too much at the shop next door. I'm going to yeah. go." So so basically, people are going back and forth across the square between going to the ATM. Well, it's inside, and they, though. It is yeah, inside. no, but what I'm saying is, okay. they walk out, they go and they 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 withdraw their crones, and then they run back into the shop and deposit them and buy Bitcoin, and they're going back and forth because of the exchange rates in whichever direction <laughs> they're moving. But of course, yeah, it only yeah. was, goes one way because you can't withdraw Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. A little bit of a hassle, I guess, for that. Yeah. yeah. Is the is the coffee at least good? Yeah, the coffee's good. It's uh okay. yeah, it's a good place. Uh yeah. And, I mean it's interesting too because it's these it doesn't it's these small machines that scan. Right. And in a way, if you have the card, um I'd love to see these machines go in other restaurants around the area. Um, awesome. So yeah, we actually um myself and another founder of uh, another company called ITF that's here. We've kind of, we've created this um, blockchain hub proc. And actually one of our ideas is getting this machine and seeing which businesses would want to accept it uh, in cooperation, uh, possibly with even this Bitcoin cafe. But this is something that can be easily done. It doesn't seem that, uh, that not possible at all. It seems pretty a good thing to do. Even. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. so just to tell us briefly, how, how did you end up in in Prague because you're you're originally from Maine I think you said is that right yep U.S. Right. Maine right yeah. so how, how does a guy from Maine I mean we can't get Boston we can't get Yuri out of Boston I mean we're trying here but he's <laughs> yeah. he's so glued to his, his background images now on these you know on these these uh, recordings that he just he's not gonna he's gonna say look I'm in space now and he's not gonna have to do anything about leaving and be like okay fine yeah, we're gonna exactly. start running. We're gonna start running competitions and asking people to share images with us so we can put them as our background soon. But no. So how did you? How did you end up uh, in going from Maine, you know, Sleepy Hollow, Maine, to lively Prague? May, yeah. may, I, may I say Sleepy Hollow, Maine, or am I gonna be in trouble now? I mean, my journey stopped in numerous places before Prague because um, then I was after Maine was living in Florida, then lived in San Antonio, Texas. And then uh, went to into the Peace Corps, United States Peace Corps, and stayed in Republic of Moldova there, um, in a rural village, doing international development work and community development work, as well wow. as actually business development work too there. Uh, total. And, of, and clearly, we can see the complete connection between community work in rural areas and uh, cryptocurrency. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, in general, though, it's a lot of similarities doing like community development work. Like you're kind of like a project manager. Right. Uh, you're trying to build something from nothing because in these villages, people oh, like crypto. Have, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's right. the project you should have done in the Peace Corps, just straight crypto with the community and, and yeah. give them all crypto. And then they would be all wealthy <laughs> uh, back in 2010. But, um, but yeah, yeah. So there's actually a lot of similarities being a project manager and even doing a business as a CEO. Um, so that was kind of actually the core where I learned to be an entrepreneur in a way. Okay. Uh, How interesting. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then after the Peace Corps, my contract ended, I uh, wanted to go back into business. And so um, went to VSA, the Economic University of Prague, uh, here in the Czech Republic, uh, to get a degree. But of course, like some entrepreneurs, we become dropouts because we're too focused on our business. Right. Uh, that happened after and uh, had been work we've been working on the concept, even started the concept of crowd holding uh, in January in 2016. Right. So we We've been working on this for a bit now. Yeah. And just, just tell us about crowd holding a little bit. Like, what, what is it doing? I mean, you've, got, you've had your ICO. You raised what you yeah. needed to raise. You know, it wasn't yeah. like the large, the large scale ICOs. You guys raised what you needed to raise. And exactly. you're off and running. You've got an active user base and all that. But just tell people what the concept is. I, I, when you told me, you know, offline, it was yeah. very cool. So just share with people yeah. what, what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll even do a different version from what you heard offline. Oh, all right. right. Here we go. Round Perfect. two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, well, yeah, what it is, is it's, it's pretty, it's, it's similar to doing an airdrop, but you do it in a form of a task and you get the crowd to comment to this task and give you feedback. Um, and you did a really bad job. 
No, Fix yeah, it. really? <laughs> <laughs> so actually our users, they, uh, they comment. Uh, it can be design work um, from anything to validation of features to actually supporting them on the marketing campaign. Okay. Uh, but it's all uh, the users really spend time creating the best content for that business right. to know what to do, uh, give them feedback. It's so crowdsourced knowledge. Crowdsourced uh, knowledge and also crowdsourced, uh, what, like work? Like, yes. Yeah, so, well, but just individual tasks. Yeah, yeah. So individual tasks, the task for the content creation. Um, is more a straight feedback, just like a product team needs to validate with their users and validate with people about what they're doing to know what to build. Uh, the crowd does this for them. So it's basically saving on research and development costs, Okay, uh, which usually takes a lot of manpower. Um, so that is like, we call this co-creation. That's the main focus. Um, but as you know, we're also in the process, even have a sprint next week to set up and prepare building our bounty sharing system. Okay, uh, so you're moving so, beyond the task now into some of the more ICO traditional yeah, airdrop that, bounty program stuff, which are still tasks. Yep, yeah, still our tasks. Um, right. And, and this is just sort of to support, because we have, we have really two types of users in a way. Um, we have what you call uh, co-creators. And when we've done our user interviews, we discovered that they're spending an hour per task with their comment. Um, which wow. is quite unique because their comments worth something and it turned out the users getting the most upvotes and the most mm -hmm. tokens are actually the ones spending the most time, which is very interesting. Um, but then we have the, what we call the crypto clickers, uh, and the crypto clickers that are coming on, uh, are, the this. <laughs> are the people crypto clickers, you need a website called crypto clickers.com. Yeah. It's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good name for a company, right? Crypto yeah. Clickers. <laughs> you better go. You better go and get that because I'll bet you by the end of this channel, by the end of this recording, someone will have already grabbed that. And they're like, "I've got yeah. crypto clickers over here." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the, yeah, those are the people that actually are what some people like to call bounty hunters, or the ones that are really active um, with sharing and spreading the word. Um, and yeah. what we've actually seen is we don't really have currently a feature that is specifically specifically for them, even though they're coming on. Right. But what we're seeing is they're starting to adapt and actually evolve into becoming a co-creator, which is exciting. That we're seeing some of these original people that were using, the, in a way, the platform a little bit wrong uh, are now actually spending the time. So it may, once we can get the bounty sharing system feature ready, um, and this is planned to be up and running by next month, um, the, and which will be also automated for the business, so none of the long, long Excel spreadsheets they have to do Everything's automated to move who shares what. Um, and then the users have to do KYC uh, to be able to prove they're a real person, which is another yeah. issue in the bounty. I mean, That's you, huge. I mean, it's, a, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's the, uh, the blessing and curse of crypto is that a lot of yeah. people just don't want to be, I mean, the whole idea is I can just hide away in the crypto world. But of course, KYC is, yeah. I think we've talked about this weeks ago, didn't we, Yuri? Like in the beginning yeah. days about the blessing and curse of KYC. And I said, I think at the time, mm -hmm. it's... It's coming and it's sort of inescapable. It's going to hit us and we have no choice but to accept the we fact that, yeah. yeah. And, and think about all the, uh, if you look at a lot of these bounty, bounty campaigns and even like what people do on through the airdrop websites, we discovered when we even did our first um, sort of referral campaign, we had 20% fake emails. Uh, really? Yeah. So, so think of all these, bounty, these campaigns where the businesses are giving tokens, but how many fake users are abusing it? as well oh yeah um, absolutely you see a lot of that in the current ico climate of you know bots on telegram channels and fake mm -hmm. users trying to take advantage and use multi-users to get extra tokens for themselves and airdrops where thousands of people coming in aren't actually thousands of people it might be again one person with one with multi-user multi-profile mm -hmm. uh you know like using because i think on telegram on the yes uh, on the uh, androids i've seen you can have multiple users which yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure why would one want multiple fake users? I, I almost like they're encouraging scams, but that's another question for another day. But well, it know, bumps it up. But, think of the, I guess think of some of the confidence when you're like, Ooh, this project, I don't know about them. I might want to buy their token, but they have going in secret telegram people. Now it could be 19,000 are fake, but it, that this is what people are doing to encourage, you know, the speculators. Yeah, I know it's, um, it's, it's and I know Telegram does try to clear out the bots, but I'm not sure why. And I've gone off piece here, but I have no idea why you'd want to have ten, you know, 
Telegram accounts. I just can't fathom the possibilities of why you would do that. But I mean, actually, yeah, the Telegram the probably needs their own KYC as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that in the news? Actually, something you said, uh, Yuri, about Telegram uh, or Ethan. You guys were saying, saying something earlier about that. So, what's we happened were, with Telegram? They they canceled their ICO because they raised enough money privately. Oh, okay. So by not doing an ICO, then they're not going to be under securities questions like Bitcoin. Yes. They just yes. put their yeah. coin out there and say, yeah. here, our coin's here. I'd be interested in how many people invested in their presale because it would be a little scary if everyone, the, the main token holders are 10 people, for example. Well, <laughs> so, you right. know, in the, in the U.S. with the whole fundraising stuff, there's like a limit of the number of users that can invest anyway. So it, yeah. won't, it won't be many. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So they Same. raised, what, 1.7 or 1. Point, what was it, $1.7 billion? So, and it's probably less than 100 people. That's huh. the crazy part about U.S. fundraising. Probably. So yeah. that means when people want to jump into not their normal ICO, but when they're on the exchange, they literally will know that there's, they can have these manipulators pump and dump what they want, right? <laughs> it's kind of risky. Right. right. So that majority of the people will be a few. Uh, so that's something we'll have to think about if, we have, if you do invest. Yeah. yeah. So are they, yeah. so they going to put themselves on an exchange then at some point? I didn't get a chance to check out of the news on this yeah, one. I don't know. Maybe they're not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not we'll sure. It's, a, I mean, if they're doing yeah. crowdfunding and they're raising money and giving tokens, presumably they have to let their investors have access to the tokens at some point. So it'll yeah. end up on some exchange at some point, probably two years from now. Because right. that's usually what the U.S. ones are doing. So, so how did you end up in Prague then exactly? So, you, you know, you went off and did the Peace Corps and yeah. lived in Romania, in, you said in Romania in a rural well, village. Moldova. In Moldova. Speak you yeah. speak yeah. Romanian. You're speaking Romanian in a, in a Moldovan village. I'm sure. How did that work out? Well, a little crazy. I, you know, the first, definitely the first three months, I had no idea what was going on. That was for sure. <laughs> and there was no English around you. So you, you felt a little crazy, but uh, eventually it clicked around six months in, it starts clicking because right. anything else you can do, you have to learn. Uh, everything around you is a Romanian. Every, every day you're like, all right, I got a plan in my head what I'm going to try to say in Romanian to people at work today. <laughs> no, yeah. So uh, you you just learn. Um, wow! I don't even have a knack for language, and yeah, you're forced to learn in a way. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So so where where are you guys taking the 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 project? What's the kind of the next direction, next steps? Yeah, yeah. So uh, so the next direction right now in our roadmap for quarter one, uh, for quarter two. Sorry, we're finishing the the bounty sharing features, um, and also improving our reward system uh, on our application from an actual task on our app. Uh, we got interesting feedback that we're, our reward system's a little off because how the voting works is its percentage of votes you get depends on like what you earn. Uh, so if let's say mm -hmm. you have your, there's two people commented, you, Steven, have two votes, Yuri has one vote, you would get 75% of the tokens and uh, Yuri would get 25. So that what's going on right now is users are realizing that when they're upvoting other people, and they are, so it's great that they're using the system correctly, mm -hmm. but they're realizing that they're also reducing their stake. So now we're looking at it. Oh. Uh, we just went a sprint last week to look at actually a different rewarding mechanism system we'll build where actually the vote will be worth a specific amount of tokens. So right. you actually, okay. user, you vote someone, you're like, yep, yeah, here's two yups. You know, yeah. here's two tokens. Right. So your your token is called a yup. Yup. Yep. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and was it always called a yup? It was uh, originally called the yuppie. A yuppie. Uh, yeah. Yuppie. And then you realized that that probably offended some small percentage of the global population. <laughs> Would you like to buy a yuppie? Yeah, <laughs> no, like a I only sell yuppies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the was the whole I want nothing to do with yeah. yuppies. I mean, can you imagine all the things yeah. people were saying about the yuppies? Yeah, well, it's kind of like we did it as a joke in a way because yep. a yuppie is like a young, think about it, it's like a, a, a young person that's in business that what is, yeah. is making some money and people young are- Young urban mad. professional, that's what a yuppie yeah. is. So actually you haven't really solved the problem by changing it from yuppie to yup. You simplified it because it is a young urban professional. So you just made sure that's exactly what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's, and uh, it, it actually it was a coincidence. If you see our logo, it's C H, and actually mm -hmm. when you flip the logo upside down, it becomes Y P for the yup. So oh. it's quite interesting. It was kind of a neat branding way. You can actually flip the logo upside down, that's and that cool. becomes our token. 
Have you got the logo there somewhere that you can show us? Um, let me... Well, if it's on your screen, that won't really. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to screen share. Well, we can I... all, we're all going to use our imagination because everybody that's listening in is going to yeah. be like, I can't see yeah. it anyway. But your well, website they is. They go to website... crowdholding.com, they'll see the logo. Yeah. Crowdholding.com where they can, they can uh, get involved and look for little bits of work, tasks where they can go and earn some yep coins. Yeah. yeah. And other people's so, tokens too. Um, businesses are attaching their own tokens as well. In our right. Application. Okay. So right. it's more than just the up coins. You're also able to yeah. put a, like a project can come on yeah. there and say, here's some of my tokens. I need you guys to help me out with whatever it is, redesign my logo or, or test something for me or do whatever it is. And people are yeah. contributing, they're liking it, they're sharing it, they're upvoting it, they're downvoting it maybe. And yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're very close. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And it actually, so I'll tell you a little bit then about like the yup cycle, so you can guys understand. A yup cycle. Wow, we yep got cycle. like all these new terms coming out on this channel yeah, today. I love it. Have to, uh, you, and you have to create a tokenomic system in order to yeah. succeed in this market. If you yeah, do, but yup cycles. That sounds fun. I'd like to yeah. live in the yup cycle. How long does the yup cycle go on for? Yeah, forever. <laughs> Actually, the wow. more businesses and users. Uh, so and on my way to the moon, I've gone through 17 and a half yup cycles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, so, uh, the average lifespan of a yup, of a, of a, of a yuppie, no, a guppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because, you know, yeah. It's like, <laughs> As the guppy, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, yeah the, it, it's pretty simple, actually. Kind of tokenomic system. Uh, our businesses actually every task that goes out ha also has yups to it, and they have mm -hmm. to purchase yups up up to, uh, top up their yups in order to place these tasks. Or up top their yups, or uh, yeah, you're getting up, twisted up there. there. Yeah. <laughs> up, you get to up the yups. Yeah, and actually, we're working on uh, uh, connecting direct APIs to. We're looking for our, we have an idea of possible partner. I won't say any partnership yet for which exchange, but um, we're looking at a direct partnership uh, with an exchange where we have the UI interface, yep. allowing the user to purchase directly. They won't even realize it, but it's actually being purchased directly from the exchange. Okay, very cool. That's, right. that's a nice idea. Yeah. So cool. uh, right now of the businesses that have already been uh, purchasing the ups, so right now we're kind of collecting it and preparing for our system to make these, uh, uh, basically to make the exchange system work after that. Right. right now, probably next month we begin some like the manual part of it of just purchasing from the exchange from yeah. the revenue as part of our in our white paper. This is the cycle. Um, but all in all, basically, the more businesses we bring, the more users that come on, uh, and. What happens is there's more transactions of yep going on on the exchange. That's yep. what creates the cycle. Yeah. Um, yep. And right then, uh, yeah. yep. and then uh, because we'll have our, uh, we'll implement the KYC process. It's simple as adding the invest button uh, to be able to trade and buy with the yup buy other tokens. Too. You just need a yup button. You don't need an invest button. <laughs> yeah, yep you can button. yup here. Yeah, <laughs> yup it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can yup vote. Yeah, yeah. You can yup it I, now. Maybe we'll create, instead of upvote, the yup vote. Yeah. I like that. Okay. There you go. So if that's the best <laughs> thing that came out of visiting our channel and having a chat with Yuri and me, we'll give some, it's, there's always takeaways that go both ways. You've left us with a lot to take away. So if there's nothing else, you've got a yup vote now for me. Yeah, all right, nice. <laughs> How about two yup votes? Yeah, Yuri, you're, you're, you're going to yup it with me? Definitely two yup votes. Yup votes for both of us, yeah. yeah. Wait, so <laughs> Ethan, is there... Is there anything to block, like, if I got a bunch of my friends mm -hmm. to join me to, like, upvote what, or to yupvote whatever my yeah. comment was or my contribution, is there a way to stop that from, like, people yeah. bringing in yeah. syndicates and being like, we just made a ton of money calling something Bodie McBookface? Yeah, for yupping it yeah. all. Yeah. yeah we, uh, we're currently actually, uh, man we're, our staff right now, we actually manually uh, report those oh, okay. people. Okay. So we actually know when people are doing it. It's quite okay. obvious. Actually, I yeah. I, I think <laughs> too, Yuri, you just came up with the term with that. You called it yup facing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yup uh, facing. Yes. So actually, we have a uh, so uh, our <laughs> actually manually. Uh, funny enough, too, the people we caught doing it uh, that we even kicked off uh, the yeah. application wrote us begging that they won't do it again and they want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So, uh, so we, but we gave them a second chance and they're trying. So it's interesting because I was telling you, uh, so like the two types of users, mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing them starting to convert, which is quite, it's quite unique. Uh, 
So it's actually really good to see. Uh, and That's we're still very small, exciting. Only 200 weekly active users commenting. We're still small, okay. but it's yeah. really good to see that there's very, there's a lot of enthusiasm with our users and that they, you know, if we did, they, they want to come back. Uh, so. And if yeah. businesses want to sign up, where do they go? Is it still to, to the same URL or is there like a sub URL for them specifically yeah, for business sign up? Simple sign up on Facebook. You can create your own project. You could create your own project and we'd review it, Stephen. Uh, and then we decide if we want to accept your project or not. So oh, yeah. how do you review the projects? Like, are there certain criteria that you look at right now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we, first off, we have a lot of uh, people, especially some advisors too. Uh, we have two uh, economist advisors as well that look at the token metrics too of these businesses. Um, so we do analyze if their business fits the crowd holding vision and ideology. Um, at the same time too, we look at their token metrics. Uh, mm -hmm. Where the, you, don't, the, you don't really want to accept, it's hard to accept someone that doesn't have no tokens for themselves, for the company. Um, and you say, so, because they're going to be needing to use this for marketing and through airdrops. Yeah. Uh, and as we know, I also believe in the future, future business models may not be actually making revenue in this industry. Um, and it comes to the fact that, think about, if you think Ethereum's nonprofit, right? Yeah. But they're one of the wealthiest companies. It's because they have ownership of some of the Ethereum. So, you know, that type of concept that you could actually, I see some of the businesses in the future making everything free on their application. So it's extremely disruptive towards anyone that's making revenue. But they become successful because they have an opportunity to uh, liquidate back to the crowd, uh, allowing them to cover their expenses as a business. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So picture when you just need one company really to do that, to make everything free and it can be extremely disruptive. Um, so we do like to see that companies are smart and that they are holding at least half of their tokens, uh, half is crowd sale, half is in their tokens. That's pretty important, especially while we'll see these business models in the future adapt. Yeah. Uh, it's three years. Especially. Yeah. So you're very early in the game with this in terms of sort of, you know, as I, I, I kind of would almost think you're like a, kind of the equivalent of steam for content curation but you're more about task curation task management and and crowdsourced task yeah. production verification validation and done at a very granular level but enabling businesses to just get little things done in a really fast dynamic interesting yeah. way so if you're not a an ico and you don't have tokens can you still as a business come on there like you know yuri and i we we really want to, you know, get our, our, you know, socks evaluated or something else. You know, yeah. We like to wear colorful socks. So, yeah, we do. yeah. So is there like something where we could bring a project to the, the platform and say, we need something done and people could actually participate if we don't yeah. have tokens? Yeah, actually we, we do have a, already a couple of businesses that don't have tokens that purchase our Yup. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So that, that's definitely, um, and actually. Yup's away. <laughs> even, even though our niche, we are targeting the, you know, pre- ICO and the, you know, directly blockchain crypto businesses, because that is our niche and that's what our users like. Cool. Uh, we do plan by fall is sort of our stage where we want to scale. My personal opinion is this fall is where we're going to see, begin seeing the first use cases. Okay. The scene is, is, is my opinion because all of the, the boost of ICOs you saw last summer, all claim they're going to build everything within the next year and a half, you know? Yeah. So, we're going to see a real interesting, should, yeah. We should no, start I know. Cases, but we'll, you're right. We'll yeah. see how what's the percentage. Probably going to be Ethan Climb well. futurist, <laughs> not uh, yeah. not. No, not I could be wrong, guys. But um, yeah, that's, that's no, my I opinion. I think it's, it's great to get individual. I mean, look, you've been through. This is the great thing, right? You've been through an ICO. You weren't going for the mega deal money, which you know. To be fair, a lot of them have not, and everyone has big aspirations. You guys have got a platform up and running now. It's got mm -hmm. revenue flowing through it. And, and you know what? That's great. That's, that's kind of the thing we really want to show people out there is it's not just about go do an ICO and raise money and crowdfund it and say how great we are. It's actually being able to deliver and say, hey, we did this. We've actually made the project. It's running. It's working. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not you know, huge yet. But um, yeah. it's, really, it's really good what you say too because you're right. There are a lot of people out there who made big promises. Yeah, I've, yeah. I'm starting to see some cracks in a couple of ICOs that are, mm -hmm. I thought would really be mega yeah. successful, raised lots of money and are struggling with basic execution. And it's like, I hope they pull their, their game together. Yeah, yeah Honestly, I mean, I'm reaching out to some of them myself and saying, look, you know, 
uh, as a person that's uh, just generally interested in the industry, please do something about your platform. And actually, I just mail support desks and tell them. And I get really interesting responses like, I'm so appreciative that you told us this and we didn't know this or we've heard that and blah, blah, blah. So it's great to see that, you know, you're actually in this space, like, you know, making it happen. It's really Building good. it. Yeah. yeah, and it was nice to be like, when, right after we raised, we, you know, began the hiring process. And actually, it took a bit of time to find the developers, but now we have uh, a team of seven developers uh, that started April 1st. So now it was great to see. Even these last two weeks, we saw the features being pushed. We haven't made it live, but we've seen the development just be much faster. And it, it's, it's definitely a relief before when you're like, you know, constantly going to the dev team, oh, come on guys, you know. Um, but uh, back to like kind of what you were saying. Uh, yeah. That people promising a lot. Uh, I kind, we kind of call this in the product world, the UFO, right? I want to build the UFO. Because how you actually like product 101, how you build a business and a product is you first build the skateboard, simple business model. You right. Know? Then you build the scooter, then you build the vehicle, then you build the UFO. And, and so yeah. a lot of, if you talk to a lot of product managers, if they're looking, if you see some of these, these projects, they literally want to build the whole UFO all at once. It's like saying if mm. Facebook with all their features today launched that in 2006, no one would get it. You no. Know? Yeah. So you got no. it. So it's really, I like to also, it's another thing where I look at businesses. I see that they actually have like, no, I'm not building the UFO first. We're doing this. Then our plan is to build this business model then this business model and eventually become a UFO, right. which in a way the day out, right? That's what well, we kind of, we, we kind of need the UFO if we're going to go to the moon anyway, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But one step at a time to get to yeah, the UFO. Absolutely. <laughs> so is there, Yuri, do you have any other questions for Ethan today? No, you, you answered them succinctly. So thank you. I'm going to. Succinctly. Uh, wow. That's a yup word. It is. <laughs> Steve and I are going to submit our sock chain company. Sock make- chain? No, I thought it was turkey coin. Well, turkey coin and sock chain. We both got tasks on each of those. We need to have some help with, right? Right. But I just came up with sock chain just right now because it's focused on socks. So sockchain.com. Yeah. yeah. So the Car- the Cardassian guy, well, I forget his name. It's going to be in you know trouble what's now funny? with you competition. Might start something. There was yeah. even a chat today of like, hey, someone that mentioned today, what if we just allowed the user to create a task and put tokens of their own and ask a question? Yeah. You know, that's right. Well, and how about an like, ecosystem that creates it? Yeah. Grow money crowd. Right? So we're like, oh, well, could. I mean, the features are there. We could really just allow that to happen. But, Isn't that but called the anyway, matrix? I don't want to say we're, we're going to do that, but it's interesting. <laughs> like uh, we have all these, ideas, a lot of, uh, it's great in our company because all these ideas are moving around and we're seeing which is the best. And then we internally get to ask our users mm-hmm. on our application, which is awesome. So we can get validation. We've even had, we've had tasks where we had a, we thought we had a great idea that we could do for a feature, but our users hated it. <laughs> and we're like, oh, whoops. And they made great points even. On why wow. So, so you've really got a good kind of community with some consensus going on as well, which is fantastic because yeah. a lot of projects say they're going to do that and they don't. So, yeah, you know. I, I think transparency is going to be key in this. I mean, if you look even transparency with monetary policy, the most successful banks actually are the ones that are most transparent. Uh, most successful businesses are usually the ones that are most transparent. Absolutely. So we're going in that direction. Especially You're singing to the choir over here. We, we both yeah. agree with that because we've both been through other historical things in our lives where transparency just didn't really play out the way it should have done. <laughs> you know, right. Right. so very cool. Right. Well, oh, wait, Ethan, I'm sorry. Ethan, oh, wait, I have a, one more question. Go okay. ask a question. Um, yeah, I do. How are you? What's your strategy for building your user base even more? So I know you've got a fantastic one base built, and they're very active. But so how are you acquiring more users and getting the word out about what you're building? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, there's still plenty of work to be built with the product. We're still beta in a way, um, and so that that like I was saying, that bounty sharing system uh, will uh, coordinate with those bounty hunters, those crypto users. Okay. Uh, so that will increase that, and then with that goal is we would recruit them to be co-creators. Uh, we do have a marketing, we do have a marketing plan set where we will do, uh, te- definitely a telegram airdrop, um, is planned and a few sort of interesting strategy airdrops that will be unconventional. What do you mean by a telegram airdrop? Oh, uh, you basically, you do an airdrop to, uh, recruit people to sign up to our app as well as to telegram. Um, and you can use, there's actually like multiple right now. What's going on is multiple airdrop websites. Uh, yeah. and we, we yeah. discovered, we did it once, and we, someone, one of our users, put us on like four airdrop websites 
yep. uh, application, and we had a flood of people come in. A lot of it was scams, oh. though. Um, <laughs> but we, we actually, 3% uh, of the people that came from this one wave are now active users, which is good. Um, one really? Thing is we so is improved that drastically though. Are you are you are you open and saying which platform it was that gave you the three percent oh, user base? It was uh, my because that's a great thing to tell the community out there, like in terms of where success it, comes from, right? Yeah, well, it, the, it was a referral program. So if you invited a friend, you got the tokens, right? So mm -hmm. someone posted their referral link right. at that time on an airdrop web. There's there's a bunch of them. There's like I think we have a we have a pretty big list that we collected of where I don't know the exact airdrop website. I really have to like okay. run out and talk to myself. Well what we'll do is when is uh, but, for for the purposes of the YouTube channel, you just say it send it to me to us privately and we'll put it up on the description below and just let yeah. people know uh, yeah, okay, you know some of the tips that. and tricks that Ethan Klein has uh, yeah, has yeah, yeah. built and found along the way in the world of ICO land, which would be great to uh, share uh, out with everyone. And I, I, this yeah. was only discovered really these like a lot of these airdrop websites were discovered a month ago from us uh, after we did that. Okay, very okay. cool. We're also this is new to us when we saw those, um, but it seemed actually very effective. So man, I'll, I'll be happy to share some of these uh, websites for other community members look uh, watching your show for sure. Great. Great well, you. Ethan, it's been um, it's been really um, a pleasure having you here. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you've you've helped me to encourage you know Yuri to get out of Boston and try something new. So, Yuri, are you going to change your background image for us now? Oh my God! Uh, yes, I am. Give me one second. All right, wow. here we go. Here we go. So, Ethan, this is room for a shock, and I'm sorry for podcasters that don't get to see this, but you can come over to our YouTube channel, which is called the the Coin Chat Surprise, um, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll have all the details of that shortly because we're recording them in video now and they'll be out on the channel wow i'm in san francisco right kind of. look at that with the see-through shirt yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is just rising up in the east right here i think it's going to push back a little bit further it'll be a lovely <laughs> afternoon that's right we're doing we're doing the weather forecast now ethan so <laughs> yeah cool Everybody well, is welcome. Well, it, anyway, it, it was great, Ethan, having you on the channel. Um, do stay in touch. And Definitely. to all of our listeners, stay tuned next week for, of course, another exciting episode of The Coin Chat. To the moon. Until next week.